If you're looking to improve your conservation storytelling, this is the video for you. I've got 10 simple tips that will help you succeed. You need visual storytelling because it shows meaning and purpose in a way that will help you build a deeper connection between your audience and your organization. You can blast all kinds of facts and figures at your viewers, and many environmental organizations do just that, but facts and figures with no story add up to zero emotional connection. You need that storytelling because that adds the context to any facts and figures. It's the storytelling and only the storytelling that will move people to action because they felt something after listening and watching. Do you remember sitting around a campfire and listening to a great story? And still today you remember that story because it sticks in your head. Or maybe you remember last week you sat in a really boring meeting and you just almost fell asleep. And the only time you woke up in that meeting is when somebody spoke up and said a story or said something that was interesting and grabbed your attention. Both these examples illustrate that humans are hardwired for stories. That's what our brains remember. The power of storytelling creates such a lasting impression on us and sticks in our brains, just like a great movie or a great book that you read. And that means that a great story is a bridge from people to people, which is exactly what your organization is trying to do. One thing that's really apparent in filmmaking today is this real drive to be more real and authentic. Overproduction is something we see in videos today, even some conservation videos. I'm not implying that you can't use these. In fact, it might even apply to your audience. Just be careful that you're not overdoing it. That means zipping and zooming and text and transitions and special effects. Too many effects can make your videos look too slick or corporate and worse, sometimes cartoonish. The more you have this kind of stuff in your videos, the more you start to look like a TV commercial. There's something more important here though. When you do videos that are really gimmicky, the odds are that it's going to have a really short shelf life because maybe those gimmicks are just trendy right now but they won't be in five years and your video is gonna look really outdated. My message would be then to not overemphasize being entertaining just for the sake of gimmicks, but thinking more long-term for how this video will be used by your conservation organization. Is it good value for the long run? This is something that I'm always trying to emphasize with environmental organizations is that you don't have a story. And by that, I mean a single story. You have many, many stories. Storytelling is always ongoing. And we know that because people come back from the field and they're talking about different stories from that day's work. So storytelling doesn't live and die with one story. It's always evolving. Maybe the head honcho of your organization is the face and voice of your organization. And that's not necessarily really bad, but just hear me out. When that becomes overdone, and that is the only face and voice, we're not hearing from the faces and voices of the people that can help you the most. And these are your supporters, your champions, your donors, your partners, even your own workers in the field. You have to allow these people to speak for themselves because that just adds to the realness of telling stories. There's a problem with some organizations being resistant to storytelling or even video, but I find that's usually based on a personal bias and turning a blind eye to the power of storytelling. When a donation campaign is launched, some people think the only focus of the video is just donate, donate, donate. And that's not how you win audiences and viewers and donors today. A good example of this are nonprofits that do humanitarian work in third world countries. 
Storytelling is used to make us care. The focus is usually on one child or one family and how your donation will make an impact on their life. These stories are so powerful that they move people to action. Okay, so how does that apply to conservation? In documentaries about wildlife, you'll often see filmmakers focus on the storytelling of one family, like a lion pride, or maybe a pack of African painted dogs. By focusing in on just one family or one individual, these documentaries help us form a bond with that animal as we watch it. It's much more specific than talking about just a generic entire population. During the course of that documentary, viewers become invested in that one animal. As the story unfolds, we start to care more and more, and we want to do an action that helps save and protect that animal. Long before you ever start filming or get in the field to produce a video, you have to ask yourself this question. What is the emotional reaction we want our audiences to feel after watching our video? Those emotions could be anger, sadness, compassion, empathy, joy, hope, or feeling, yes, I want to do this. Whatever it is, you have to know it going in beforehand so you can craft a story to achieve that goal. And this will also help you cut out the fluff that doesn't contribute to creating that kind of reaction. Where is that video going to live once it's finished? It's going to be on YouTube and you're going to embed it on your website. Is it going to be on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram? How are you going to drive traffic to the video? Are you going to have a teaser created to help drive anticipation for the video when it's released? Are you going to carve up that video into little small little snippets for further use on socials? Think of ways that you can turn a video into evergreen content. Some of those examples I just gave you are ways that you can do that. Evergreen content is stuff that you can use over and over and over again. Can we all just stop saying that likes are a measure of success of anything on social media? Sure, likes can help, but they're really just a vanity metric. We're much better off knowing the watch time statistics, how long people watched, when did they click off a video, shares, were they subscribers, were they non-subscribers, website analytics that can measure how many people clicked to the call to action. The whole point of great storytelling is to make people do an action. So we need to have a plan for measuring that action. Well, there you have it. 10 simple things to think about when you're doing environmental visual storytelling. I hope they helped you and I hope they encourage you to dive into visual storytelling for conservation. Hey, if you like this video, please remember to subscribe and like, and I will see you in the next video.